Welcome everybody, this is Chris at Chris Swift Studio and today we're going to be going over advanced features of how to retime your clips. We're going to be going over a lot of the more sophisticated functions for retiming and this video together with our other one on the basic aspects of retiming will you'll have knowledge about how to do absolutely everything available in Final Cut Pro for retiming your clips. All the retiming stuff is right under here. I click on that and we're going to be doing everything from hold all the way on down to jump cut at markers. But the first thing I'm going to do is jump around a little bit. I won't be doing them from top to bottom. The first thing I want to do is get into the custom settings. So click on that. And this dialog box comes up and gives you these options. You can forward or reverse. Reverse pretty straightforward. Just play the clip backwards. You can set the rate where you can set the percent. And you can also have ripple on or ripple off. I'll be going through all of these. And also you can manually set the duration where if I've got a 40 second clip and I want to turn this into a 20 second clip, well, I'll just do that and it's just sped up by 200%. Control Z to go backwards. Um, if I want to set the rate, now here I set my percent, and again, if I set this at 50% now, that means the duration of the clip will double and it will play half speed. There you go. As if, and if you did check out our other uh, basic um, retiming video, you know already that you can grab these little retiming handles here and slide them in and make it faster or slower or whatever you want to do. So let's go back to custom again on this clip and let's just set this at 100% back to normal again. Now what's going to happen if you turn ripple off, check this out, uh, the timeline demagnetizes, so adjacent clips down the timeline are not going to stick with it. So if I change this to say 200% again, it's going to create a gap clip, which is right in there. And Command-Z to go backwards. And if I slow it down, let's say I slow it down by half, It'll go ahead and slow it down by half, and I'll rem remember 50%, it slows down by half, which means the duration doubles. So if I hit enter, this clip should be this long, approximately, because it's going to double in duration. But what's going to happen is I will lose everything in my clip from here to here. So I'm going to lose th about this information when I do this. And you can see right now at the at the end of this clip I've got Mr. Red Flower Shorts standing on the left hand side. When I hit enter, well yeah, I slowed it down by 50, but I lost it. So now at the very end I don't see Mr. Red Shorts. Okay. That's it on custom. Good. Okay. Now, let's move on to another one here. Now let's go to hold. I've got this clip active. I've got the playhead set where I want to and I'm going to go ahead and set hold and it's going to create a freeze frame to the single frame to the right of where the playhead is. And there it is. Now if we zoom in on this a little bit with our uh, command plus, get a little bit better idea. You can set how long you want this one frame to hold for and then after that we'll come back and play normally as it would. Also, if you want to really really fix the time on this you can choose custom and obviously these are blanked out that doesn't make any sense forward or reverse uh, ripple makes sense and you can set the duration exactly how long you want so if I want it to hold for exactly one second just put in one second and there you've got it next one I want to do is reverse clip and reverse clip is pretty straightforward you just click that and whatever clip is selected will play backwards and then you'll see reverse normal 100%. Then you could reverse it faster if you want, or 
by dragging that in or reverse it slower if you want uh, by dragging those handles. Let's get back to normal again. But there's something else you can do with this reverse clip. Now, um, I, I kind of really like every now and then this, this effect where you've got one clip and then all of a sudden it speeds up and starts playing forward, backward, forward, backward. And what I've done is I've taken this clip. This used to be all one big long clip, but what I did was I bladed out this one particular section of the clip uh, by using the blade tool. And then what I did was I selected it and then I did Command C to copy it. And then what I did was I moved my playhead down to the next, uh, right at the end of this clip by playing, uh, sorry, by pushing the down arrow to go down the timeline to the next edit point. And then I started doing a whole bunch of Command V, Command V, Command V to paste it. So here I've got these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After I did that with the one clip, what I did was I'll so I selected this one and then every other one after that, and then I selected reverse clip. So now I've got all these done, but now once they're doing that and then reversing and back and forth, I want to speed it up. I, I want this to go about like this, you know. Um, so what I can do at this point is create a compound clip out of all of these. Well, just click and drag the ones you want and now use the keyboard shortcut option G and name it. Okay, retiming advanced. Let's call this forward reverse. Hit enter for OK. And now that entire thing turns into one clip. And now what I can do is speed it up and whatever, let's say eight times faster. Now what you do is go back here and just press the space bar to play. It's not bad. Got to wait for this to render up to 100% to play a little bit more smoothly. Still actually sometimes is a little bit jumpy, but that's about where I want it. And it also, again, grab the handle and slide it around if you want to change uh, the speed of that. So that's another thing you can do with a reverse. Okay, now let's go to rewind. Let's jump down to rewind because uh, reverse clip and rewind are not the same thing. Take a look what happens to this clip when I do rewind. If I hit reverse, the entire clip would simply play backwards. Let's say I want to rewind twice as fast. Check out what happens. It drops into the middle of the clip a certain section that will play backwards. And what what information is it taking to play backwards? It's taking the information right here, it's duplicating it, and then playing it backwards. And that is reverse clip and that is rewind. Let's try a little blade speed right now. Blade speed is pretty cool. I've got my clip selected. Um, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut shift B. Now, what I can do here in this one is wherever my scrubber is or wherever my playhead is, uh, it's going to happen. But if my playhead is here and my scrubber is here, it'll default to the scrubber. So if I hit Shift B, it's going to cut. Shift B, sh B. Command plus to zoom in a little bit. And as usual, I can click and drag. And if I want to slow that particular section down, there we go. And as you saw in the basic video, I've got my little transition handles here I can slide out to affect how smooth or how abrupt the transition is. I guess I would have to zoom in there a little bit more to get a hold of that guy. I really want to get that guy. There he is, right. So those are my transition handles. And that is also blade cut. Let me do a whole bunch of Command Z's to get this guy back to normal again. The whole thing. And there we go. Blade cut. Uh, reset. Let's do that one. 
pretty straightforward. Just reset the speed to what it was before. Uh, automatic speed. Now, if in your camera you decided to change the frame rate, let's say you're just shooting at, let's say, 30 frames per second, and there's one particular shot you want to do at 60 frames per second. Well, when you bring all your clips into the timeline, one of them is going to have a different frame rate for the rest. So, uh, if you don't want that to be the case, then you click on that one clip that has a different frame rate from the others, uh, and then click automatic speed. It will set the frame rate of that to be the same as the other clips in your project. Okay, speed ramp. Speed ramp's pretty cool too. Now I've got two options here, to zero or from zero. Let's do to zero on this one clip I have selected. And let's come on right over here. So you can see it slows down just a little bit and then just a, a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Okay, the closer you get to 100% on the slow, the closer it's coming back to the normal speed. Okay, and you have your handles for your transition. So this is a nice way to gradually slow down or gradually speed up your clip. So it will start slowly here and then eventually it will start getting faster and faster. Next one we're going to do is instant replay. Okay, I've got my clip selected. It doesn't really matter uh, uh, where the playhead is for our next guy we're going to look at, which is instant replay. It's going to take the entire clip and I want to slow that down by 50% for the instant replay. So there's my clip, and here's my replay of the clip slowed down by 50%. And it also automatically puts in a title. You can see up here it says instant replay. So if you click on that, uh, then you can go back and change all sorts of stuff about that. You can see the text where it says instant replay. Change that to whatever you want. Play around with what kind of font, size, color, etc. So if you want an instant replay of just one particular part in a clip, you're going to have to blade that out. Get your blade tool, cut out that one section of the clip, click on it to highlight it, and then do instant replay. Now the last one we're going to do is jump cut at markers. Now you can see when I select that I've got nothing available because I haven't placed any markers yet. So what I'm going to do is just come in here, and also for placing a marker, it's where your playhead is. Hit the M key to place a marker. I'm going to move the scrubber down here, and I'm going to hit the M key again, so it defaults to the wherever the scrubber is, and again, right there. Now, when I do jump cut at markers, what this tells me is if I select three frames, what that means is the first three frames after a marker are going to be cut out. So I'm going to take 30 frames to make it even more obvious. There it is. And now when I play it, you're going to see the jump. Boom. You see this a lot in stuff in videos etc. Like the guy walking down the hallway and all of a sudden he jumps closer to you and jumps closer. Now if I want to get rid of this, now what I can do is simply either click on the marker, do a right click, and then delete marker, or I can use the keyboard shortcut with the marker highlighted, Control M, to delete that one. Okay, and let's just jump back and get back to where we were originally. That's about it, ladies and gentlemen. We have covered absolutely everything. In our other uh, video, we talked about video quality, and I talked about this a lot in um, uh, the other retiming video we have on making super slow-mo. The real, uh, you know, take-home message is if you want to slow down a lot, the takeaway is use optical flow. It smooths it out uh, much more nicely. And that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Have a great time with retiming it. Really, it can add a lot to your movies. See you next time.